Three years ago, Cuba's biotech industries were given unprecedented, once unthinkable freedom to do business for profit overseas. La ciencia es algo muy caro. Te das cuenta que una empresa, yo le decía, una planta de esto, tiene un alto costo. Para mantenerlo necesitas dinero. En un país pobre, ¿dónde sacas dinero? Entonces, el razonamiento lógico fue los propios productos que tú generas en estas industrias sean capaces de exportarse ingresar suficiente dinero y ese dinero tú lo retornas al sistema y mantienes un alto estándar en la salud y en los diferentes. The result, hundreds of multi-million dollar healthcare deals with dozens of countries, from Brazil to Serbia. Cuba has essentially two things to offer. First, known treatments at much lower prices. Take bone marrow transplants. The Cubans are good at them, and they cost less than in the U.S. At this Havana hospital, Diane Clayton from Kingston, Jamaica, is recovering from the procedure. We're doing a story on um, Cuban medicine, and so I wanted to ask you uh, why you came to Cuba to have this procedure done. You heard how great the service here is. The cost was more affordable for you. Your two main choices were to go to the U.S. or to come to Cuba. I see. So you looked at the numbers for both places and also the quality of the care and decided Cuba was the best choice. A no-brainer. <laughs> then there's Cuba's own patented medicines, like Eberprot P for diabetes, injections that regenerate ulcers on the feet, helping patients avoid amputations. An estimated 80,000 Americans could benefit from this Cuba-only treatment. Cuba is also a leader in curing blood diseases such as leukemia. The list is long. And for one rare disease, Cuba even built a clinic solely for foreigners. The disease retinitis pigmentosa. It's a degenerative loss of peripheral vision, causing tunnel vision, then blindness. There's no cure, but the Cubans figured out how to arrest it. 